How do we identify the trend? How do we identify the seasonality? The one more important aspect that needs to be understood is the cyclicity that is present in the data. Right? So, just trying to understand whenever we are talking of cycles, if I am talking about rigid cycles, it is more like an up and down moment like this at different points in time where the pattern is more rigid, more solid, more clearly visible. This is one dimension of cyclicity. And in some cases, the pattern may not be rigid uh, and is not that clearly visible at all. Right? Uh, so, uh, majority of uh, the real world, business, economics, financial data, I find them, they are not much of rigid. So, they, so a clear-cut definition that comes out for cyclicity is, any kind of dynamics that is present in the data which is not captured by either the trend or seasonality. If there has been a trend, it is captured by the trend analysis. If there has been a seasonality, it is captured as a part of uh, the seasonality adjustments using the seasonal dummies, etc. Anything that is not captured by trend and seasonalities, it is going into the cyclicality analysis. So, as we move and move in terms of understanding the cyclicality mechanisms, uh, we can very simply understand that portion of the variation in the data that is not captured by trend and seasonalities, we are looking at cyclical analysis on them. So, that, so, from that perspective, almost every uh, data, every time series data will contain uh, the cyclicality in some form or the other. And the, there are so many patterns. We will be looking at them in the next few sessions. There are uh, quite a good number of uh, patterns that are more and more associated with cyclicality. It's not that easy to identify the cyclicality like we have identified trend and uh, seasonality. Trend and seasonalities are more relatively more easier to identify compared to identifying the cyclicity in the data. Right? So, to identify that particular stationarity in the data, to identify that particular cyclicality in the data, first of all, we need to understand the concept of Covariant stationary data. Right? Generally, whenever I talk about a time series, right, we are capturing the values at different points in time y1, y2, y3, so on, yn. For the last n periods, it could be n months, n years, n quarters, n days. So y1 is the data at the first point second point and the nth data. So, this is the typical time series data and we are calling it as a realization. Different values that your variable can take at different points in time and a sample of that which is a finite. This could be an infinite data set as well. Right? For every second I can expect a different value being taken by y. If I am assuming that the y is uh, a stock price data for a particular stock, for every minute the stock price is going to change. And when I am talking about the realization of the values for that time series, it is as good as the data right from the beginning of the stock for every minute change, whatever is the change in the stock price that has come out, that forms the realization which is almost an infinite set. Now, if I am taking at some pre-specified points in time, one day at the end of first day, at the end of second day, at the end of third day, it means I am taking a sample subset of that entire realization and I call that as the sample path. The intention in understanding this is identify the probability structure of that past data. If the probability structure is changing quite drastically, then obviously I cannot do anything because the past is nowhere a reflection for the future. 
the future is nowhere dependent on the past data everything is random and i cannot use it for my forecasting purpose so from that standpoint we are trying to understand the process whether it is covariant stationary if at all some process is covariant stationary then i can very well make a couple of steps forward in terms of doing the forecasting of the data using the concept of covariant stationarity and what it uh, simply means is any data that i look at if the mean and the covariance for different combinations of the values if they are the same across different time periods if they are the same if they are identifiable if they are constant then that is what will ensure the covariance stationarity to the data now just to uh, get that uh, covariance stationarity i'll try to generate one simple random data set right i'll uh, generate a normally uh, a standard normal inverse data set using a random function let's try to uh, understand whether this particular uh, data set is covariant stationary or not i'm generating a values of around 500 observations okay let's assume that these are the real time values that we have got for some particular process let me not uh, get more so this is like a simple data that we have collected now what i would like to do is i will try to find out the mean right i would like to find out the mean at different points in time so let's say the mean of 100 so if i try finding out the mean from what or probably i'll take the mean of 50 at a time so i'll try to find out the mean of the first 50 right i'll try to find out the mean of the first 50 elements i have got that the mean is around minus 0.06 similarly when i am taking the mean from let's say 51 to 100 element right when i am taking the mean from 51 to 100 elements okay let me try out the mean of 51 to 100 okay this is the mean of the values from 51 to 100 even this is uh, 0.27 probably i'll take a mean of 11 to 60 right i'll take the mean of 11 to 60 okay this is around minus 0.08 now what we could see is the means if i am taking mean of 151 to 200 right when i have taken the mean from 150 first observation to the 200th observation also the mean is not too different so across different points in time the mean is more or less the same right if the mean is more or less the same or probably